Streets are in chaos. Suddenly rules don't matter anymore. We walk on tables. We lick people in the face. We put butts in people's faces with no consideration for the rules of the land. Hey friends, welcome back. I am The Jason, and we're talking about home defense today. So put your feet up, grab some popcorn, relax a little bit, don't forget to lock the doors, take some notes. Let's get started. The first step is gonna be just understanding what your vulnerabilities are. I would like to put myself in a bad guy's position. So when I approach a house, what direction would I come from if I'm the bad guy? I would want to be undetected. I want to get in as easy as possible if I'm coming in here to get either steal something or to cause bodily harm to whoever lives here. I'm going to try to get in here in the sneakiest way possible. I'm not going to walk straight down the, the front driveway all the way a, an idiot would, a really stupid bad guy would, and they're out there. But I want to plan for the worst case scenario. I want to plan for the really, really intelligent bad guy. So how would I do that? Oh, I'd probably come in around the backside somewhere that wouldn't be very, very easily seen from the house or from the yard or anything like that. So clearing some brush, clearing some things out of the way so I can, so the homeowner could better see what's going on would be really, really smart. That would make it more difficult for a would-be bad guy to get close to the home. So motion sensing lights further away from the home, I think are really, really good because it can alert you to somebody being in the area. Motion sensors that chime I think are really really good because anybody that's walking by can uh, the homeowner is going to be able to hear that chime and know that something is moving in the perimeter right and just be alerted to it. Might be a deer, might be just the wind sometimes that's the problem with them that I have found is that sometimes it's false alarms and you get this uh, it's like the boy that cried wolf it cries it cries it cries and eventually you start to ignore it. Hopefully that's not the case and you always pay attention attention to it to at least some degree. Motion sensing lights, again, really, really good idea. Illuminate the area so you know that when that light pops off, something has moved out there and you can see what's going on. Just having some clear space around your home is smart. If it's overgrown, bushes everywhere, it's easy for someone to sneak up, have lots of hiding spots, and we don't want that. How dangerous is the area that you live in? I currently live in a very safe community for the most part. We've got some drug issues and things like that going on, but very few violent crimes going on in my area and that's by design that's by choice that's why we live here if you live in a place that has a much higher crime rate and uh, you are just going to be much more likely to be involved in some sort of home invasion or burglary or something like that so you need to level up your game you need to step up your game just a little bit i do not feel it necessary in the current state of things to have bars on my windows. But if you live in a congested urban area like one that I used to live in, you might think that that's a pretty important idea to secure your windows a little bit better and have some sort of bars on there. In the neighborhood I lived in in California, we had our car broken into, there were home invasions and all that kind of stuff going on. And that's one of the primary reasons why we don't live there anymore. So let's say things get really, really bad and you're worried about bulletproofing your home. That's a difficult thing to do unless you've had a hand in building that home from start, start to finish, it's gonna be difficult for you to do that after the fact. Yes, you could reinforce the walls and you could do all kinds of stuff behind the drywall and make all kinds of, of additions to the walls to make them more bulletproof, definitely. But I think the most, the easiest approach would be a couple different things. You could have safer areas of your home that are more bulletproof. For example, I could have a big giant concrete kind of planter right here. The, it could be made out of concrete. It could be filled with soil, obviously, and it's gonna be difficult for a bullet to travel through something like that. Not impossible, but difficult for a bullet to travel through something like that. And then it would have to, not only would it have to go through that, then it would have to go through the walls of the home as well. Having a safe room inside of the house, someplace where you and your family can retreat to, lock it down tight, Maybe it's even a secret type room would be awesome if you have the budget and the means to do something like that. But at least a very, very secure room where it's going to be very difficult for someone to get into. I, when I used to work with the Navy, I worked with Navy SEALs and I used to play the bad guy uh, in, in training uh, sessions from time to time. And the bad guy that is barricaded in a room is a very, very dangerous individual. It is really difficult for even trained elite professional warriors to get into that room 
without taking any casualties themselves. Because a barricaded person sitting there in the dark corner, ready to go, if you're taken by surprise, that's one thing. But if you know there's bad guys in your house, you know that's going on and you get to that safe room, man, it's going to be bad for anyone that wants to get into that safe room if there's only really one point of entry. So, so having a safe room, I think, is a really smart choice. And that safe room doesn't just go for you know, bad guys, intruders in your home. That could be for tornadoes or other natural disasters, hurricanes kind of stuff, a place where you're going to be safe, sheltered, from trees falling on the house or something like that as well. Let's talk things like fires. How would we get out of an upstairs room like that if there was a fire downstairs and there was no safe way to get out? Some sort of ladder that you can roll out of the window that hooks onto the, the windowsill itself would be really, really smart so you could avoid breaking your legs if you jumped out of Yeah, the, you're gonna die if you jump out of there, but man, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> it's gonna make it difficult for you to move away from the home if it is burning, and you definitely wanna get as far away as possible. So, so having some way to get out, alternative ways to get out. Do you have stuff in your house cluttered and jammed, blocking doors and all sorts of things? Uh, just declutter, organize your home a little bit so you can have alternative ways to get out of the home if necessary. Because going back to the home invasion type thing, maybe the smartest thing to do, if possible, is just to get out of the house and flee, get away. And if we're in some sort of SHTF type scenario, maybe I post up here on top of the hill and I just wait for an opportunity to take my home back. Having a good dog, regardless of the breed, I think is pretty important because dogs have keen eyes, ears, and noses that can alert you to pen potential dangers. Everybody always wants to talk about guard dogs and the Belgian Malinois and uh, German Shepherds and all the things that will bite and attack uh, on, on command. I think that that is great, but just having a basic an, al an alarm system, such as animals that can alert you to the presence of somebody that's not supposed to be there is pretty great. And believe it or not, the ducks are really good at that. If anybody walks outside, walks down the driveway, comes within sight of them, they do this. <laughs> That's what they do. So <laughs> and you don't have to quack like that. I just got them going. But yeah, if it was nighttime and you walked into the yard, that's exactly what they would do. They would start chiming off. I heard guineas. I heard that guineas are really, really good for that. Geese and guineas, I've heard, are really, really good for that as well. So we talked about fences, building giant, big, tall fences with razor wire on top. That would all be fantastic, you know, if you're into that kind of thing. And yes, it would help people keep people away from your home and, and have a buffer zone. I think that that's a good idea. Um, but I don't necessarily think it's always a necessary thing to have some great big fence around your property. One, it's really expensive to build any kind of fence. Even a small fence is really expensive to build. And it may or may not be necessary. I prefer having just some open space, some clearings, so it's difficult for someone to approach the home without being seen, without being out in the open. And you can have different levels of fencing. So let's say I did have some sort of small fence around my, around my property that someone had to cross to get into, and now they know, hey, I'm trespassing. So no longer are they you know, just freely walking about. They took a deliberate step to get on, to, to cross something, to get onto your property. Then maybe I could have a secondary one that's gonna slow them down. So for example, I've got a natural one here, which is a creek. So if they got onto the property, they would have to slow down. They would have to come to a, a, a pinch point like this bridge, or they would have to go across the creek in some form or fashion, which is not gonna be that easy. It's gonna slow them down to some degree. Yes, offers some cover and concealment to them as well, um, but there's no perfect property, there's no perfect scenario. You just gotta, and that's what I'm trying to get across is that you just need to weigh out what your weak points are and slowly start working on improving those so you don't become the victim. Yeah, like I was saying, building fencing, any kind of fencing, even the cheapest one, like a barbed wire simple fence, is not cheap. It, it costs quite a bit of money. Like a T-post nowadays is probably somewhere around six bucks. And six bucks a pop for each post around even a small property, that adds up really, really fast. The barbed wire itself isn't that expensive, but the T-posts, that, that gets expensive. I would like to have a moat around my entire property. You know, a really proper moat. Built with a lot of crocodiles, possibly human waste. 
<laughs> and nobody would want to go through that without some sort of hazmat suit at least. But I feel like that might lead to some serious health concerns as well. So maybe that's not such a good idea. Thorny bushes and stuff like this is, it's got its pros and cons, right? It sucks for you being the person that lives here because I can't get through here. All these briars and brambles and stuff, the thicket by the creek here, really, really difficult for me to get through, if not impossible without some sort of machete. Also, really, really good in the fact that no one's gonna come through that. And like I said before, you can funnel people to move in the directions you want with spiky, thorny type veg uh, vegetation. A lot of people recommend that you have thorny type bushes underneath your windows because it's gonna make it more difficult for people to access your house through those windows because of those thorny bushes. I think that, that there's some pros and cons to that as well because yes, while it may make it uncomfortable and more difficult for someone to get into that window through these bushes, it's also gonna give them a place to hide and tuck away so the unsuspecting homeowner that walks around and it, it, the bad guy can just pop out and they'd be hidden from your view. So I don't necessarily like that. I don't like a lot of vegetation and bushes and stuff close to the house because it gives people places to hide. When it comes to home security, consistency I think is a really important one that gets neglected a lot. So always closing the gate, always locking the door, always responding and at least looking out the window if you hear that chime go off. Being consistent with these things is important because it's the time that you forget to do it is the time that someone's gonna take advantage of you being forgetful or being lazy or neglectful. People get comfortable, you know, especially if you live in a safe area like this, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else. Uh, I, I live in a safe area, so I let my guard down when I'm at home. I don't expect something bad to happen. I don't expect some crazy person to come onto the property and attack me or my family. But it's because you don't expect it it, that makes you that much more vulnerable. So having some sort of situation situational awareness about you at all times, I think is important. No, we don't walk around constantly, you know, thinking like, like the chickens do. We don't always, we don't run at everything that comes overhead. We just, but we're aware of it. We might take, take a look up and see that hawk swirling around perhaps instead of just freaking out. So having some sort of situational awareness, I think is really important. And just um, not letting your guard down 100% really at any time. So let's say the SHTF is upon us and the biker lesbian pirates are encircling the house <laughs> and they're enraged, they're furious, and they want what I have. Nothing I have in this house, nothing, nothing I own is worth my life or the life of my loved ones. So having ways to easily get out of the home and alternative ways to get out of the home Possibly where you can do it undetected, I think is a really, really good option if you have the ability to do that. But just having ways to get out and get, get out fast, having your bags packed, having the necessary supplies needed, I think would be really important in a situation like that. I don't think we're there yet. Well, I know we're not there yet. There's no biker pirates swarming my house at the moment. But if times were to get tough and we, we pay attention to what's going on, the the uh, atmosphere of the world, the country is falling apart and getting a little bit worse each day it seems like. As things progressively get worse, we might have to step up our level of preparedness a little bit more. Let's say you don't own property, you don't have a, a, a home per se, and let's say you're renting a, an apartment or a condo or something like that in a more urban area. Do you know all the emergency exits out of the building? Do you know exactly where the closest stairwell is? Do you and your family have a meetup location outside of that building if something was to go down? Do you always lock the doors? Do you have secure deadbolts and uh, the chain latch and all the things? Use the peep hole on the door. Do you do all these things regularly? Or do you just open up the door to see who it is when someone knocks? Lots of things like this to be considered. You're a little bit more limited, obviously, in a situation like that, but at the same time, there's less to protect. There's less vulnerable spots in a situation like that too. So pros and cons to every situation, I guess. If I did live in an urban area, I would perhaps be much more aware of my surroundings. I would 
monitor the radios. I would monitor the news. If there was riots going out on going on on the other side of town, it might be a really good idea to pay attention to these types of things so you can get a heads up. If you know something's coming your way, maybe you've got enough time to pack up what you need and get out of there before it hits you. Security cameras are also a good tactic, even if they're dummy cameras, the good dummy cameras, the ones that look real, because bad guys don't want to be seen, they don't want to be caught. So if you've got cameras and they're in some location, maybe you even have signs that say, hey, you know, you're on camera, and the bad guys can see those cameras, they're much less likely to target your property because they don't want to get caught. They'll move on to the apartment, the, the house down the street, that doesn't have the cameras where there's a little bit less risk. I always recommend having some sort of personal protection device. There are some places in the world, some anti-freedom countries, that don't allow these types of devices to be owned by regular civilians. And I understand that. So, but there are a lot of alternatives out there from everything from sharp pokey things to bear sprays and all that using those inside of some confined space it's always a risk because that's just it's highly likely that you're going to be affected by that spray as well but there are a lot of alternatives out there for personal protection devices if you are either not allowed to or you're unwilling to have something like that i am of the belief that everybody should have something like that uh, they should own something that they can protect themselves and their, their families with having a really, really bright light on it so you can identify what the problem is or just blind the individual with a really, really bright light and give you a second to react to what's going on, I think is also really, really important. A big bright flashlight on that personal protection device that I can light up this entire field basically is really nice. And I've used it on several occasions. Not I have Luckily, I haven't actually had to use it but but it was there and available if needed look guys i am no expert i don't know everything about home perimeter defense that's you know not my expertise i did not get a degree in home defenseology but but i am somebody that takes it seriously and i am somebody that tries to find weaknesses in my own security and tries to steadily slowly improve upon those things and I feel like you guys watching are probably in the same boat as me. So in the comment section, if you don't mind, take a second and leave another tip or another something, piece of advice that you could offer to the viewers that will help secure their home. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave us a comment. Any comment will do if you don't feel like talking about defending your home. Tell us you know, your favorite kind of weather, what your favorite season is. Tell us ducks or chickens, what would you prefer? Not Anything will ducks. ducks. Ducks are kind of a pain. Let us know something in the comment section. Thanks guys.